get a chance, turn to Matthew 16, 15. So I'm not going to be real long, but it's God's already shown up. It's all good. This is a uh, passage I think most people have heard are familiar with. And uh, Jesus turned his disciples in verse 15 and he says, Who do you say that I am? And uh, this is a question that each of us have to answer. Uh, and Simon Peter answered, You are the Christ, the Son of the living God. I've used that a lot in salvation messages so much because it's something that each of us have to answer. And then Jesus turned to Simon Peter and he said, Blessed are you, Simon Barjona, for fre flesh and blood has not revealed this to you, but my Father who is in heaven. I also, I also tell you that you are Peter, and upon this rock I will build my church, and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. It's not on Peter that uh, the church is built. It's on the revelation of who Jesus is. You got that right? Yeah. Yeah. When Peter said, you are the Christ, he said, I can build my church on that. And then um, the gates of hell will not prevail against it because that revelation will change your life. That's the revelation. Uh, you cannot be shaken when you have that revelation. It's so powerful. Then, right after that, it says this in verse 19. I will give to you the keys of the kingdom of heaven. And whatever you bind on earth will have been bound in heaven. And whatever you release on earth will have been released in heaven. We'll have translations say what you bind on earth will be bound in heaven. What you loose on earth will be loose in heaven. Uh, but the proper translation of this verse is, is whatever you bind and loose upon the earth, it's already happened in heaven. And it's actually the way Jesus operated, the way Jesus operated in, in his ministry. And it's a key for us to have breakthrough in our life. Peter had the revelation of who Christ is. And he said, I will give you the keys to the kingdom of heaven. In biblical time, the keys meant you have, uh, you have uh, authority. I give you authority now. I give you the keys. You can open doors. The, the person that has the keys to the house has authority at the house. So, Jesus is telling Peter, and he's telling us, he was speaking to his church, I give you the keys to the kingdom of heaven. Guys, that's so powerful. And whatever you bind on earth has already been bound in heaven. And when you loose things on earth, it's because they've already been loosed in heaven. And this verse has really been pressing in on me lately. Um, and it's a two-part to this. We have to do our part. And we have to co- labor and work with God. I think so many times I've looked in my life where I've missed it because I'm waiting on God to move. Oh God, please come and move in this situation. And actually, the Lord's looking at me wanting to know when I'm going to take the first step. Um, why, why are you doing to pray? What is, why is intercession so important? It's a co laboring It's working together with heaven. You're binding and loosing upon the earth 
what God has already bound and loosed in heaven, and you bring it from heaven to earth. I remember one time, I've used this example before, I was in India, and uh, we had just got there, and I think there's one billion people in India, and the way they drive, I can't believe there's no more than 10 of them left. They are absolutely nuts on the road. <laughs> and if you've ever ridden in a car in India, it's kind of like this. If you want to pass someone, you, you kind of pull out, and if the vehicle you're in is bigger than the vehicle coming head on at you, you go ahead and pull out and make him run into the ditch. <laughs> because you've got the bigger vehicle. So we're driving down the road in this Jeep, and we're eight hours on the road, already seen 12 accidents. And I was sitting in the back seat, we're going to this village to do this crusade in this village. And uh, it's like God screams in my ear, pray now. Oh, and I just put my head down and prayed. And when I looked up, there was a dump truck that was pulling out in the iron lane. And then he stopped, hesitated, and pulled back in. And we went, zoom past it. So the question is, is why did I have to pray? I mean, I'm on a mission from God. I'm a missionary. We're in India. We're preaching the gospel. God could have done it, right? He could have put his hand down and stopped that dump truck from pulling out. But the way the kingdom works is I had to bind something upon earth that God had determined was bound in heaven was that accident. You see, there is a co-laboring process we have in the kingdom with God. I believe we don't see more breakthrough in our life because we don't have a full revelation of that. So many times, I'm in a situation when you're in a battle, whether it's with your finances, health, whatever, and you're just, you're just kind of putting up with it, you're getting through it, you're crying out to God for help. Sometimes we whine, we complain, we cry out for help, whatever it is, but I don't believe that's binding and loosening. You have the keys to the kingdom of heaven. Um, I give you the keys. You have a revelation of who Jesus is. So because you have the revelation of who Jesus is, there are keys of authority that have been put into your hands. And the key, and the, the thing is here is, Lord, show me how to turn the key. Lord, show me how to operate in this authority that you've given me. And it's God does his part, but we have to do our part. We have the keys, which means we have to actually take that key, put it in, and turn it, and open that door. So, one of my little pet things when people say, I, I love to serve God, I go, that's really not real scriptural. You don't serve God, you Co-labor with Jesus in the New Testament. Co-labor. You work together. It's a couple of verses. Oh man, I have somewhere. Corinthians six one. We then, as workers together with Him. Uh, for Corinthians three nine. For we are laborers together with God. We are not employees. We are not servants. We are laborers with God. And right now, more than anything, I just want you to get that revelation is that you have keys of authority that have been given to you. Just kind of 
hold your hand, alright? I have keys of authority God's given to me, right? Lord, I thank you because I believe in your Son. He is the Christ. And because of that, keys of authority have been released to me, to the kingdom of heaven. That's why intercession is so powerful. Because intercessors, and it's just part of the, the gift that God gives the body, but intercessors know how to ascend and they have keys that, that they can open, that they can bind and loose. When, you know, something's going on, always it's big, we send out an email, please pray for this. Why do we do that? It's not that it's just a nice thing to do. It's we understand the importance of prayer, of people who have keys to the kingdom in their hand, that understand the authority that they have in their hand. And when people understand the authority that they have in their hand, they're really dangerous to the kingdom of darkness. <laughs> and the prayers of a righteous man avail much. So Father, I just, Lord, I just pray that the revelation, Lord, would come upon your church. Yes. Yes, we'll about the keys that you've given us. Lord, these keys are so, so powerful. We do not wage war with flesh and blood, but with powers and principalities. Lord, because of that, we have heavenly keys to the kingdom of heaven, which means, Lord, we can open up all the resources of the kingdom of heaven Think about that. You have available to you the, all of the resources in the kingdom of heaven because you have the keys. You know, I'll think about this sometimes and I'll go, man, am I even scratching the surface yet? I mean, really? If we place more importance, I believe, on things we don't see over things we see, we can really start to walk in a deeper revelation of this. If we place more revelation on things we do not see over things we do see, which is of this natural world, things we do not see, which is a supernatural world, which is what will last forever. Yes. All this will pass away, but the kingdom, the word remains. When we place a greater importance on what you do not see, in the key, meaning the kingdom, you, you start to respond to what you sense is important. So when you're facing a situation in your life, know that there is resources in the kingdom that will provide an answer to that situation. And you have the keys. When you cry out and say, Oh God, why is this happening? I, I, I just believe sometimes the Lord's saying, you got the keys. And the key is intimacy. You know, the worship and everything, it was just that, that was the, the flow. Part of the flow today was just with that intimacy. Lord, the more I know you, the more I see the kingdom. The more time I spend with you, the more revelation there is. 
The more time I'm in the light, the more revelation I receive. I've heard many preachers say that the greatest revelation that the church needs in this hour is who we are. Our identity in Christ. Who we are. Who we are. We are ones that co-labor with Jesus. We are ones that have keys to the kingdom in our hands. This one verse has just got me really messed up for a while for these verses. I will give you the keys of the kingdom of heaven, and whatever you bind on earth will have already been bound in heaven. And whatever you release on earth will have already been released in heaven. Jesus was very fond of saying, I only do what I see my Father do. Because he could only bind things upon the earth that had been bound in heaven. That had already been bound in heaven. He could only loose things upon the earth that had already been loosed in heaven. And often, he had to see that. It was that intimate time with the Father of going away and just, Lord, just show me what you want me to do today, God. You know, I've said this before, but when I really get into in a prayer, really press in for service, God will actually take me into the future. I'll actually time travel into the service I'm getting ready to go into and I see flashes and glimpses of the service. And I'll see people in the service and when I, the service starts, I'll know who to call out because I've already seen it. I'll know who's going to get healed, at least a couple of them, because I've already seen it. It's, it was already loosed in heaven. She said, I only do what I see my father do. I just want to encourage you today. I said, this is going to be short, but I, I just really want to encourage you. You have within your hands the keys to the kingdom. Keys of the kingdom. You have in your hands the keys to the kingdom. And the cool thing is, is we have our entire life to figure out how to use it. We had this incredible journey with Jesus. Of, Lord, you're going to show me how I co-labor, how I minister with you, and how I use this incredible keys of authority that you've given me. You really don't need to look to anyone else. Even though we're all here to help each other, when it comes down to it, you have the keys in your hands. It's just, it's just so powerful. And I don't know if I'm doing justice in trying to explain this right. I wish I had a magic bullet or something to say. This is exactly how you turn it on. But all I can tell you is it's a journey of exploring God, of finding out about who the Father is. That intimate fellowship with the Holy Spirit. And just knowing the grace that Jesus gives us. It's through that process that we learn how to bind and loose upon the earth. What's already been bound and loose in heaven. Amen. 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 Father, we just thank you, Lord. Father, I just ask for a revelation, a spirit of revelation to 
flood us, the flood this place, Lord, on how to bind and to loose, to how to use this incredible authority, these keys to the kingdom that you put within our hands. Lord, we have powerful weapons that you've given us. Father, we just, I just thank you, Lord, that, that, that you've done this incredible thing. That you've entrusted us to steward the keys to the kingdom of heaven. That we actually get to steward this. Father, thank you in the name of Jesus. Amen.